Welcome. In this video, we will be installing the Flexco PT Max Adjustable Return Side Belt Trainer. Before starting the installation, we will confirm that we have all of the trainer components, the mounting bolt kit, the IOM packet, and all of the required tools. Then once the conveyor has been physically locked and tagged out, we can begin the installation. The PT Max will ship with the mounting brackets attached to the telescoping brackets. We're going to remove the mounting bracket for installation on conveyor structure. Here we've placed wood shims to make it easier to get our brackets off. Now we've identified a location for our PT Max. We're about 20 feet into the mist track area and we've got about 33 inches of horizontal clearance, which is our minimum, as well as 17 inches of clearance vertically. When mounting our PT Max, we can expect about 150 to 200 feet of downstream effect. Now that we have our bracket mounted, we're going to need to take a measurement from the bracket to a fixed point on the structure. Seventy-two inches. Okay. Now we can take that measurement to the offside, measure to that fixed point, and we'll have our bracket in the exact same spot. Now that we have both of our mounting brackets installed, the next step is we need to get a belt reference mark from the belt over to our bracket. We want to take out any cupping, then level, and make a mark here. We'll also need to get a measurement between the two brackets here at 51 and a half inches. That's going to tell us how much our extending brackets need to extend out to fit in between our brackets. Now we're going to remove the roller to make the unit lighter and easier to install. Now we're going to take a measurement between our extending brackets. Here it's at 47 inches. Earlier we took a measurement between our two brackets that was 51 and a half. We're going to want to extend this out to about 51 inches to give us a little bit of play between our brackets. We're going, to, we're going to move these out two inches on each side so that we know that we're even. Here at 51 inches. Now we're going to lock our extending brackets in place using the locking bolt that is located on each side. With a return side trainer, typically we wouldn't have an obstruction below the unit. Then we could lift it directly into place with the lever chain hoist. Here we do have an obstruction. So what we'll do is lift the unit into place and then slide it up to our brackets and lift it with the chain hoist then. Now we've got the unit slid up into place under our brackets and our chain hoist installed. We're ready to reinstall the roller onto the unit. And then secure it in place with the zip ties provided. Now we're going to use the mark we made earlier as the belt reference mark, measure down three and a half inches, and that's where we want the top of our extender bracket to be to give us the half of an inch of belt lift. Now 
Now that we've raised the unit to the proper height, we're going to bolt our extender bracket to our mounting bracket. We'll just hand tighten the fastener and repeat on the other side. Now that we have our bolts in place and hand tight, we can remove our chain fall. With our extender bracket locking bolts loose, we can now tight, tighten our mounting bolts. Now we need to confirm that our unit is centered up between our brackets. Got two and three eighths here. Two and three quarter. Two and three quarter. Okay, now that we're centered up, we can lock down our extending bracket lock bolts. Now that the unit is centered up and locked into place and the weight of the belt is holding the roller in, we can remove our zip ties. Now with the zip ties out of the way, we can install our sensor arms. Now that our sensor arms are secured in place, we're ready to install the sensors. First, we'll remove the nut and the lock washer, then insert the adjuster rod into the sensor arm. And reinstall the lock washer and the nut. Once we've done that, we're gonna rotate the sensors up until they're perpendicular to the belt and then lock the adjuster rod locking nut. This doesn't have to be too tight because with the flat spot on the adjuster rod that will allow us to keep these perpendicular to belt as we adjust it in and out. Now that our sensor arms are in place we need to remove the shipping lock bracket. This bracket is in place to keep the unit from pivoting during installation. To remove the bracket, we'll need to slightly pivot the unit, so make sure to keep your fingers from getting pinched. To properly adjust the sensors, if the belt is centered on our roller, we'll adjust the sensors in until we have a three quarter inch gap between the edge of the belt and our sensors on both sides. In this case, our belt is mistracked to the off side. What we'll do here is pivot the unit up on the side of mistrack and adjust our sensors in until they have light contact with the belt edge. On the opposite side, we'll adjust it in until we have an inch and a half gap between our sensors and the belt edge. Once we've got our adjustments, we can lock our sensors in place. Now that we've adjusted our sensors and confirmed that there's no interference with our sensors in the structure, we're ready to run the belt to see if our tracking goals have been achieved. If they have not, we can make fine adjustments in on one side and out on the other the same amount. Now we've completed the installation of the Flexco PT Max belt train.